Okay, Doug, what can we look at now? Right, here's a couple of very useful things. Um, okay, see this H button up here? Toggle hide view. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an additional track. Um, so I'll do Alt Command N. I'll create a software instrument track. The track uh, that's created always appears below whichever track you had highlighted when you created a track. Okay, so I'll now highlight the audio track here and I'll, instead of doing um, Alt Command N to create a new track, I'll just hit this plus button this time, which is another way of adding a new track, and I'll add an audio track this time. And then again, another audio track. Okay, and uh, there we go. Now, let's say I'm getting further into my, my arrangement. I mean, there would be a lot more tracks than this, and I'll now get the pencil tool and I'll just set this to bar and I'll just draw in a couple of extra bars of music there, which would be MIDI stuff, you know, on this instrument, these couple of instrument tracks. And then just to show you that color bar thing again for each track, I'll just Alt C, bring up the color menu. I'll just colour this track um, blue and this track um, like this kind of purple colour here. Let's say that purple. There we are. By the way, this colour menu, if you click a square, double click it, brings up the colour dialog where you can access the different colour choosers and you could therefore assign custom colours to these boxes individually so I could scroll along until I find a selection of colours I like. Well that was nice because I don't like intense colours myself. Like say I could add this colour or let's say I could add this nice blue or going up here let's find a nice brown. Like this nice um, dark chocolate brown. Just click that and then OK and it's assigned this brown colour to that square. You see that? Okay, so and it's changed that now. So I'll change that to be a this selected track to be like a green. Okay, now this is just to show you again when I now draw in a region there, it takes the colour assigned to that track, and again there blue and this one will be green. Okay, so I'll select my pointer tool, just highlight those three regions, and with bar selected for the snap. Come on logic. Give me that tool. Oh, it's got so many visual bugs. Here we go. Right, there we are. And now we've got these three bits of audio. Okay, now imagine they had audio in and that was like some vocals I'd recorded over this MIDI backing here, here, here and here. And there'd probably be more tracks, okay. But you get the idea. So I've got these three audio tracks which have got vocals on or whatever that have been recorded along with this MIDI backing. And I've got further into my arrangement, I've got a lot of tracks living all the way down here. And I now want to work on tweaking this bit of MIDI or of the arrangement while listening to these vocals. But I want to get rid of all this clutter. Right now we use this H key. Toggle hide view. So you press the H button, which initially is greyed out like that, right? And it becomes green the first time you click it. And little H buttons look appear on each track header. So you simply switch on the H for the three audio tracks and then click this big master H button up here and hey presto those three tracks are hidden and this H key master button goes orange to show you that you've got hidden tracks right so brilliant I've now can work on, on this MIDI part of my arrangement while still listening to those audio tracks which have only been hidden they're not turned off they're still playing and therefore the clutter is removed and I can work on this bit of MIDI and the audio plays along in the background without it having to be visible and it's a good way of getting rid of clutter. Fantastic. Okay, so that's what the H or um, a toggle hide view does. Alright, now whilst we've got some regions created I'm going to now show you this marquee strut which actually I've switched on before I started this video. It should be off. Right, there you go. Um, this lane that lives across the top of here is the bars and beats lane. It's where it shows, and by default, it just is showing this little note icon there. 
and it's set to bar and it's showing bars like that that's bar 5, bar 6, bar 7 and it's showing the beats and divisions depending on how you zoomed in of course right you can change this to show different things you can change it to show bar and time in which case the bars just drop down a bit and this timeline appears above it showing hours minutes seconds and frames and this combination is quite good if you are working on a MIDI arrangement perhaps that has to fit in a very sort of um, a very defined time because perhaps you're composing MIDI to a TV advert or something it has to be exactly 30 seconds long or something right you can choose time only, in which case that's kind of useful if you're composing freeform to a bit of um, video or something. And it just shows time in hours, minutes, seconds and frames and nothing else. Or you can choose time and bar, which simply reverses bar and time. And time and bar just reverses the two lanes so that the bar lane with the bars and divisions and beats is much smaller and lives on top and the time bar is much bigger and lives on the bottom. So I'll put that back to bar. And that just leaves this marquee stripe. There it is, this tiny little thin stripe that lives along the top there. Now that works with the marquee tool. Let's introduce the marquee tool. Here it is at the bottom of our toolbox. And it works in conjunction with the snap. So I'm going to set the snap to beat and basically it allows me to draw a highlight across one or more regions by simply holding down with the left mouse and dragging across the regions I want to select. And once I've selected and highlighted with the marquee tool that selection of the inside these regions I can then do things like choose my scissors tool and just click anywhere on that highlighted area and it cuts that section out. Or I could get the eraser tool and just click anywhere on that highlighted marquee area and it would cut all that out. See that's what the marquee tool does. Okay now the marquee stripe just gives you a white visual indicator across the top showing you what you've marqueed but the other thing that you can do with the marquee stripe is you can use it in itself to drag out the marquee selection. And I dragged across the marquee stripe using the pointer tool and it highlights everything that lives below. And this is a good way if you want to, you know, marquee whole sections of your song. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it into ticks because I just want this marquee stripe, this end, to lie exactly between these two notes like that. There we are. And I want this one to be slightly forward of that note. So let's say I've, I've now, using the marquee stripe, highlighted with the marquee all the regions living below that marquee stripe in the range set by the marquee stripe and now I can do the same thing I can just click anywhere and delete that entire section but only within the marquee area or I can split that entire region and then either delete what I've split or I could delete the end bits to leave me just what I've left had marqueed. See what I mean? Okay, so that's what the marquee stripe does uh, in combination with the marquee tool, and it can be useful if you get deeper into the program. I'll just turn it off now. Alrighty, um, let's move on.